looking at the skulls I've got to work with here, I think what I'll want to do is kind of follow some of the scenes that we're seeing in these designs or some of the designs that we're seeing is basically playing off two skulls. I can see looking at the general shape of my logo, which is going to be the centerpiece of my design, that I can play off the shape of the skulls and the shape of the logo just by tilting the skull here. I'm going to get some balance in here and I might want to tilt this just a bit more there. Or I could work with something like this one coming directly off the side, but coming flat off the side view I don't like. There's not a lot of depth in there. I actually like, I think, this skull the best because it seems to fit in here nicely and we can bring that in there. So I think I'll work for now with just that skull. I'll move these skulls up here and we'll bring the logo over here. And what I'll want to do is take this skull, I believe, I'm just going to tweak this a little bit shape-wise. I don't want to go too much or I'll warp or destroy it even more and I don't want to destroy it. But what I want to do is start bringing some feathers off of this to get a flow of wings coming off of this skull. Now I want to be designing close to size and I can see this is set up at one by two inches. My document is 13 by nine inches and I probably don't want to make this just a little bit bigger, but I'm going to be wanting coming off of the center of my page more or less with my A set up here at somewhere right about probably that size there. Because when you're working with brushes, you really want to be working pretty close to size. Because when you resize brushes, and then if you want to go in and change or swap out your brushes, all the brushes reset to the original size, and you have to go back and reset all the brushes. And this design will have a lot of brushes. So I'm going to try and stay pretty close to size. So that being the case, with my skull coming out at about two inches here, I can bring that up probably a little bit bigger right there and that'll be fine. I'll go ahead and delete this guideline. I just wanted that as a reference point. I'm going to go ahead now and zoom in here and I'll start working with a tablet now and getting some brushes going on here. And Looking at this skull, the first thing I want to do is bring some feathers off this and create my wing shape and then we'll go from there. So go to my artistic media tools. I'm already set up in the right I am the correct, yes, I'm in the correct folder for my brushes. If you download the brush pack from the site, all you need to do is just extract that, and then you can just navigate to it through Corel. We show you how to do that, all the free tutorials for brushes on the site. But I want to go to Feathered Wings, and I want to go to Hand Drawn. Got about 90 different feathers in here to draw with, but I'm going to start with Hand Drawn. We'll take a look at that, and I'm just going to create a stroke here and see what we've got. We've got our white here. Now you can see when I went from right to left, my feather is upside down. If I go left to right, my feather is right side up. So I'm going to want to go ahead and reverse this skull and start drawing off of this side just because it's going to be more comfortable for me blowing in that direction with the feathers. Bring this down here. I'm going to rotate just a little bit more. Go ahead and zoom in here. And the first thing I'll do is start bringing those feathers off. So I've got a couple of different feathers here. These are set up at different lengths with different shapes. For example, this one has no sides, but kind of like one sided, and that would be like the outside of the wing, and then we've got different brushes set up. This would be down along the inside of the wing, and then this is actually a shorter brush, has less detail because it's actually meant to be shorter. It's meant to be just about that long there. And you'll notice it still has the type of detail that we've got with the bigger brushes, but it's just shorter. So you've got the different parts for designing the wings, by hand when you're working with this. Now I'm working with a tablet right now, but these are just as easy to set up with um, your Bezier tool or your pen tool. In fact, if you can draw your standard vector lines in Corel, then you can work with brushes very effectively. The brushes give you a strong benefit of being able to custom shape your art, whereas clip art is static. These brushes give you the ability to custom shape what's going on with your graphics. So one graphic has a literally unlimited number of uses depending on what you want to do with it. Now, this being set up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with this brush, which is the smaller brush. I'll go ahead and delete this. Click here, come in here. I know that I've got that smaller brush there. And I'll just start coming off of the skull of the top of the skull here with brush strokes. Now, I'm drawing with a pen right now, but all I want to do is create the top of the feather and then bring this down here. I think because of the way the logo is set up here, 
me better off bringing my wings down. It's kind of like a swooping down wing set. And then I can bring my text or whatever I want in across the top. So you've got that feather set up there. Now you notice there's a little bit of destruction here in this. But if I go to my pick tool, I'll double click on this. And you'll notice if I double click, I'll change this shape tool. And I can change these nodes. And then if I just move this a little bit, make some tweaking with the nodes here, that line will come back. When you've got a lot of detail in brushes in Corel, sometimes the brush fusses with the line of the vector. And if you change it just a little bit, it'll bring back that destruction or repair the issue that you had there. And I'll bring another brush down here like that. And I want to hit Control Z. And actually, I think what I want to do is go from smaller to longer. So we want to come up here and just kind of arch this way and then start coming this way here. Same thing here. And then coming in off this way and changing direction because we're going to want to bring this down into a change of direction to start swooping feathers down. Now all of these are set up here. What I'm going to want to do is just take this and go right click order, go to in front of and click on my skull. Do the same thing here, order in front of my skull and have these wings tucked in behind each other so you can't see the stars. Order in front of and I'll click on my skull and then we'll do the same thing here. Order and we'll go in front of and I'll click on my skull. So I've got that set up and what I want to do next here is start working with some different brushes out of my feather pack. I'm going to grab my stick control Z. So you can see where we're going with this now, and we'll start bringing our feathers down this way. Now what I think I want to do is bring some more feathers off here. So we can start working off the center point here for now. And we can come back and change these later if we want to. Hit Control Z there, I didn't like the way that one came out. Now this is going to go here. This is going to go this way. That's going to go that way, and we'll have another brush coming down this way. And we'll just come right on down here this way. Now you can see we've got some different things going on here. We'll start building the shape out. Now if I want, I can go ahead and change the size of my brush and get some smaller brushes coming down in here. Let me hit Control Z, go back. And just come up here into my artistic media properties bar and change the size of some of these strokes. And going up instead of down there. Go up and come up. I think that'll be fine right there get my pick tool and I'm just going to double click on these and adjust the shape here. Double click here, change to my shape tool and just tweak that shape a little bit. Double click here, got a couple of nodes in here. That's not really going to matter. I'm going to bring this shape in and just arch it out a little bit here, give that some more shape. So I'm do the same thing here. You can see that that destroyed when we fix it, it'll be fine. And I want to bring this over here. I've got a node there I can grab. It'll take you a little time to get used to working with these nodes, but it's just as easy as dealing with vector, simple vector lines from the Bezier tool in Corel once you get used to it. Bring this over here and bring all of this this way. And I want to get some more curve in here. Something like that, just so that these can all play off of each other as they come down through the design. You can see by arching these out, I'm just adding some more swoop to the design, some more interesting design shape to these feathers instead of just straight, 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 feather, feather, feather. So I'm happy with that at this point. The next thing I want to do is we want to go ahead and send these to the back of the page. Actually in front of the skull order, in front of, and I'll click on the skull. Order. Front of, and I'll click on the skull again here, and take this order in front of, and I'll click on the skull again, and we'll do the same thing here. Order in front of, and click on the skull again here. Now, this all this being set this way, because I'm going to come in with another effect here across the front of the skull, so I'll work with this the way it is now. The feather that I want to start dealing with here at this point is going to be a different feather. Now, what I'm going to do at this point, I'll start working with the Bezier tool just so I can show you that you really don't have to work with a pen tool. So I'll go to my mouse here, and what I'll do is I'm going to process a save at this point just because I've done some work. And when you're working with these brushes, you want to save a little bit more. 
you're really kind of pushing Corel a little bit. Now we've got the Bezier tool here, and what I'm going to do is start right up here. Just start, left click, drag, start pulling a feather off this way, arch that in there, and then bring that right down to here. And I'm going to make this one of those downward swooping feathers. Switch back to my artistic media tool, and then I'll come up here to the top feather and use that as the outside along the side of the feather coming down as we start that and then we start coming back in. And I'm just going to zoom out and zoom back in here. I'm go to my pick tool, double click on that. I'll get my shape tool. I know that I've got a node here. Up on the top, I want to pull this brush up in just a little bit more. Arch out that way. Come on down, left click here. And bring the shape of this brush right in against this other feather that I've got here on the outside. Right there. Now, that's set up. So the next thing I'll do with this is I'll just right click on it and select order and to back of page. Now you can see this feather is coming right down in through here, but what's happening here, I'm going to get my pick tool, double click this, and I'm moving really slow because I'm trying to explain artistically what I'm thinking as well as what I'm doing going through the design. If I wanted to just whack this out, I could just blow right through it, but anyway, that feather is heading down that way, and what I can do now is simply take this feather that I have here and start duplicating it if I want. Just like that, just left click, pull, right click one time. And then come up here and change that feather to one that's not got the outside on it. And I'll bring that up in size just a bit. And then I'll right click on that, order to back of page. Double click on that with the pick tool. That'll change me to the shape tool, and then I can go ahead and drag this down and change its shape. And adjust this feather to fit what's going on with the design here. Pretty simple to do. Now we'll do some of the same here. Just go ahead and click this and duplicate it. And then when I get down here, I'll start straightening, straightening this out. So I'll double click on this and bring this down here and start to straighten this feather out. So it's not flaring to the outside of the design, but starting to go straight. And then we'll do this again also. Now these feathers are not coming up on top because they're on a different layer. And we'll take this, which is right here, and we'll go ahead and double click on this. And we'll start changing our size and bringing this back up in here. Now, what I'm going to want to do is start flowing back up into the skull, I believe. I can do some more tweaking on this later. Double click and pull this up in this way, similar to what you see there. And then I'll actually come here and move this feather over a little bit to make room for these. Now, I want to make some room in these feathers for some more effect. I'm going to go ahead and take these feathers and start tweaking them just a bit. Now you see I'm trying to click. I'm not getting my line to click on because it's off the side of the feather here. But when I, if I want to get to that, all I need to do is go to my pick tool, double click. That'll change. Now I'm going to bring this out just a bit here and get myself some space. Now you can see that brush destroyed that time. So I'm going to go back to my pick tool and double click on that. And we'll move that just a bit and then that'll come back. Do the same thing here. Okay, so I've got what's set up here pretty much is my feathers with the skull ready to go. Now, if I had tried to draw that by hand and do that in vector, it would take me seven or eight hours, possibly even more. But here I've done it with brushes, a lot of control, very good look, really in a matter of 15 minutes. If I wasn't doing the video, I'd set it up in five minutes. Now I can take a look at where we're going with this by coming over here and looking at my design and my A's, maybe resize this a bit. Now one of the really cool things is I can go ahead and lasso all of these brushes and start to manipulate them as a group or a selected selection and change that 
lasso these again and I can bring these up as you can see there or bring them down and really kind of tweak what's going on with these relating to this design as you can see here so now that my feathers are set up I want to move into some of the next things I want to start creating for this design